solo exhibition at the gallery this year. She also curated the last biennial um, in Sao Paulo. And she also was part of the show in MoMA, New Photography in New York 2018. Let me see if I get her. The connection is really bad in Brazil, so we need to see whether this works or not. Let's see. Hi, Sofia. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good. Strange times, but I'm good. I know. How is it in Brazil? It's uh, very complicated because we have, a, uh, I think it's the only government in the planet that it's... Um, in denial. Uh, not yeah, in total denial and telling people to go back to the streets. So it's uh, everybody is at home, but uh, regardless of, of what this president says. So it's really, uh, it's an awkward situation. We are all doing our best. We are all at home, but it's a horrible political is, moment. Is the art, um, is the art we uh, are seeing um, in any ways reflecting to what's happening in terms of um, the situation? Do you have a feeling of that or is that too early to say? It's very hard to say. Of course, uh, all the galleries, they are very engaged in continuing uh, the exchange and many galleries are doing things like what we are doing now, that it's promoting the dialogue. Also, galleries recently had... Uh, um, um, created uh, groups to support COVID, to support the help for COVID. So we donate, I just donated a drawing for that. So things are happening, but we are, we, are, we are still learning how to deal with that in all senses. And get a result like everything else. And how is Sao Paulo affected? Because you're spending a lot of time in the countryside in the past... Yeah. But now you're in your studio in Sao Paulo. Yeah, now I, I'm in my studio in Sao Paulo. I, the, the decision to move to, the, to, to a house in the countryside near a forest was not regarding uh, this, the quarantine. It was something that I had already planned. So I'm going now to have a, a life in between the forest and Sao Paulo. So I'm not spending that much time in Sao Paulo. And that... For that reason, I'm really happy to be here in the studio right now with you. But Sao Paulo is um, it's the biggest uh, spot of COVID right now. And still, we see a lot of people in the streets. Really? So, so not everyone is taking their own responsibility to actually stay no, home? Yeah, everybody is with masks. But no, we see a lot of people in the streets. Mm. So walking and uh, a lot of uh, people in the car so it's really hard to say why well i'm excited to see your new studio i've never been to to this one i've been to your house in sao paulo but never yes. to the studio so this is studio is um it's, uh, it's a very easy it's from a very special story was uh, a dream uh, between me and a great friend of mine called Andrea that has this beauty and we decided to to set a studio here so here so it begins here it's in a it's in a big building of car car parking so here you have a picture that was at Viennio dimensions here are weird this picture is three meters by five wow <laughs> Yeah, it, it feels, no, maybe three, sorry, three meters by three and a, and a half, not by five. So these are, uh, you remember, Lisa, the performances that were, um, that the photographies were part of the, our show in yeah. Vienna. So these are the masks that I used for the performance. They are here, of course, for me to keep the research going. So with the use of this, this was, uh, by the way, what, there's one, there was one picture in the show that was precisely this image. But, yeah, I can uh, show some of the images of our show. Right. Yeah. 
And there is another one here too. Oh, here you can see some of them. Um, <clears throat> so your work is the result of a lot of research. So you're yeah. using the, the medium, the photographic medium, as, um, you know, to raise questions of philosophy or also what an image is. So why did you choose the medium photography? I don't really feel I chose photography. I, I feel like photography chose me to, to be the, the vehicle, the media for this kind of philosophical problem that I, I've been researching for so many years that it's related to the, the bound between meaning and matter, how things exist, uh, how things can have a meaning. I was for many, many years uh, research inside museums and paleontology places, archaeological museums. And then at one point I went to the prehistorical caves in south of France and I realized there that this problem was so complex that it was actually from that problem between matter and meaning that art, politics, philosophy, religion, science, all of that uh, is originated from this. After that, my work changed dramatically and it was the first time I engaged as curator in a show called No Sound. And shortly, and, and a few years after, I did a curatorial project for the last in Bayanian. Yes, it was a very big challenge from which I learned it so much. And now I'm working towards mythology, theater, the basis of religion and uh, metaphysics and trying to understand the, the connection between what's not material, what's not uh, physical from mm. uh, the consistence of an image. This was already quite, um, uh, the heart of my research to the point that my first book called The Swamp, in its cover, it's written images do not exist in this sense that uh, to, uh, to exist. I have it here. It, yes. It's very, so that, we've done yes. a book presentation with it. Yeah. Um, three years ago, no, five, four, three years, three and a half, no, four, it, almost. It was 2016, so it's, yeah. uh, a lot it's four or five years but uh but then so what i try to understand is this it's the metaphysical aspect of really things existing experience and that's why mythology create a sense of comprehension to that and therefore, and, and the theater that I say, it's always this question of theater of reality. It's the theater itself, it's uh, existing itself. It's the expression of culture, is a system of theater. Mm. So from this, is, uh, these are the, like the basis of my research now. I'm still trying to understand how am I going to put that in practice right now. It's a shame that uh, we are not, maybe we can do another studio visit, Lisa, in my, in the forest house. In the country house, yeah, that would be nice. Yes, because then there I can show you the drawings and the sculptures and the texts that I've been working on that are this very small attempt to comprehend uh, the basis of emptiness and uh, matter. So... I think maybe also to go in, I'll try to find an image more to explain a little bit more the performance, you know, performative side of your work, which I think is so beautiful. It's unfortunately a bit tough to see that was by Daniel. Maybe this one. Maybe you, uh, we can show the video if you have the link. We'll, uh... we'll, we'll link the video of the, of the performances, but it's a very beautiful series that we've also shown at the gallery um, and um, I think it is also a very important series that you will be you know continuously working on the theater of artifice so maybe you want to tell just a little bit about it 
Yeah, so Theater of Artifice is part of, it's one, it's the biggest performance that I've done uh, within the idea, the concept of performances to become a photograph. So uh, this was a moment in my research where I was trying to engage, to build an image from the experience, from the theatrical experience of collage. So I, I was already doing that for a long time. I was doing collage with parts of my images to mm. make them become another layer of image. And at the time I was researching about a, a myth from the Guarani indigenous uh, tribes in Brazil uh, by the comprehension of a French anthropologist. And this anthropologist was saying about this myth that Guarani believed that one was the evil and the good was not uh, the multiple, but the two. When Guarani was Guarani, at the same time, it was every one single other thing that existed. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was trying to... I was working on this myth and I went to Paraguay and I photographed the masks of indigenous tribes that were in a museum called the Museum of Clay. And those are the masks that are yeah, there. That that you, I... yeah. And then I invited a group of artists uh, that later would become Pine uh, PNL uh, group and they perform it in front of uh, you see that in the background there is uh, already a uh, very painted uh, it's, it's a, a photograph of yours that yes, they're it's a, performing it's a, very, yeah. it's a very large scale photograph that I have printed and used it as background and then in front of that there were performers holding these parts of photographs of mine also that I've done about the Guarani masks, of the Guarani masks in Paraguay, that is a country uh, in South America. And within uh, eight hours of performance, uh, we developed this uh, investigation on what would be symbolically, but also in practice, to become another image. I was calling that uh, live collages. So this was not, this in this uh, theater for artifice was not the first one, and also was not the last one. The first one was I did in my house with two artists, and uh, the result was precisely uh, this series here. How long so ago was here, that? It's, it was uh, like a few months before. It was in 2018 mm. also. So here is a woman and the same woman. I, I put them together in this picture. But she's holding a mask and here she's holding another mask. And that was already in front of another image of mine that it was printed in the living room, in the room, and she was performing in the front. It's beautiful. So, this is called this performance is called the battle between the sun and the opposite of the sun and it's uh it's, it's so this was the first uh, performance and then these ones with these masks as you can see was the second performance and then there was a a third third layer of performance that happened in biennial with the Pienal group Group. Yeah, I'll show an image of um, of the biennial, and I'll also um, will also upload. Wait, hold on. Um, I will also upload the video because I think it's really important to see the. Yeah, how how it happened. Yeah, it is. It's it's uh, it explains by itself something that it's hard to put in words. This this is in MoMA, right? This, this is, is, yeah, I, sorry, this is. So this is biennial. Biennial, this is and this is what I wanted to show you, the entrance. Can you, can you come, no, the entrance and the entrance is, come one picture before. This one? 
you see these writings, it's written before everything was one. And this one is precisely the one of Guarani people saying that the one mm. was the evil and the good was the, this um, two, where Guarani is Guarani at the same time it is a river or at the same time it is God. So this before everything was one was regarding this individual one and not this united one. Also in Biennial, something that was very, um, the, the base of my research in Biennial was when I went to visit the Museum of uh, the Unconsciousness, that it was a research by a psychiatrist called Nisi da Silveira in Rio de Janeiro, where she was developing a treatment of healing with the experience of art instead of very heavy medicines with wow. schizophrenics. And that is a research that is still ongoing. And uh, I had the privilege not only to be able to dive in the, in, in the 400,000 artworks produced in 50, maybe 50 years of this uh, hospital museum, but also of be able to invite a, a great artist that is from this uh, hospital and, and museum, just that, that uh, we might see paintings of him in the images of Bayern. Maybe not. It was a very mm, I don't have, but I know which ones you mean. They're really beautiful. Yeah. Um, they but are... wait, maybe oh. here? No, almost. No. But it was really a huge project, so I'm sure we we only. But have... we can, yeah, we can. I will post them after. But they're really beautiful um, drawings and paintings. Yes. Um, there is one more. There are a few questions I can see. Hold on, let's see the first question. Do you um, you do a lot of research in various museums? Which ones do you find particularly inspire, uh, inspirational? So the, the, uh, when I went to the prehistorical caves in south, south of France, first, first Lascaux, then Chauvet, I was considering I was entering the first museum in the world. And uh, it was the thing that most collapsed and most uh, uh, defined my research. So if I would name the first and most important would be this one, the prehistorical caves. Actually, the replics of the prehistorical place, the identical replics, which we can consider it to be a museum. Yeah, Very in France. In France. One is in the southeast, one is in the southwest of France. But both of them is in the south. And uh, there is another museum that is very special to me, that it's the Museum of Archaeology, and no, Museum of Paleontology and, and Comparant Anatomy in Jardin des Plans in Paris. It's a very, very beautiful museum that everyone should go because it's old, it's, a, it's like a fossil. It's a museum that is already a fossil. Amazing. Very intact. And there are many, many pictures that I've taken from this. There, there is almost two entire exhibitions that came from the research I did in this museum. Called the, the exhibition called The Impossible and the exhibition called The Names that I both I did in Sao Paulo and Lisbon. They are both from almost entirely from this museum. But there are many, many I could call. That museum of, clay, museum of Clay in uh, uh, Asunção in Paraguay was also, it is, it's where I did the photographs of masks. Nice. There's another one. Um, the curtains seem to be an essential part in your exhibition. What do they represent to you? We've had that question a lot in the in the in the show. Very good question. So the first time I used velvet curtains was in my first curatorial project called No Sound, where I was trying to make the artist and myself to engage in a kind of a metaphysical investigation between. Uh, artist and art without the without uh, the uh, the interference of language. So the first curatorial project I did, I was refusing language because I was reading texts 
poiesis from Aristoteles and um, the death of the author from Bards and something of Merleau-Ponty and uh, the Hida. And uh, in, in a short a part of, I don't know, I think it's poiesis, it was saying that uh, language, to, to resume, I think it's, sorry, it's Bards, Lang the basis of language is tragedy by itself. So tragedy is what? I won't go through that now, otherwise I would have to explain for 15 minutes, but language is basically tragic. So I was saying, I won't, I will refuse tragedy now, the first uh, curatorial show. And as curator, I decided to give to the show four elements of proposition to the show, which would be a fireplace where we would burn the artwork and we would get the artworks back from the burning and we would repaint and we would burn it mm. again, again and again, so that we would uh, uh, research what was happening with the meaning of that. And the second cura uh, curatorial, the second proposition was a hole in the ground where we could bury, sorry, bury, bury, bury. The, bury the artworks. The other one was a phrase in the front of the show called it, every object is an enigma. And the fourth, that's, all, that's why I'm telling all that, it was a velvet curtain. And the, in the proposition of having a velvet curtain in that show, it was a very small one, two by uh, high people. <laughs> I'm seeing Rika. Hi, Paolo. Rika. <laughs> <laughs> it was his birthday yesterday. Oh, happy birthday, uh, Rika. I'm yeah, sorry, I'm not wearing an Austrian jacket. Yeah, He's obsessed with Austrian jackets. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so the velvet curtain was to represent the passage between reality and representation. So everything in the show that would go through this two by three meters velvet curtain, that it was actually easy to move around the show because the show was a happening that was changing all the time would engage in this sense of depiction. So if a cat would enter, if I, if an object would enter the curtain, it would enter to this other state, that it's the state of representation. So the curtains were there for that in the first time. And then in a few years later, when I did the show in Amsterdam, I used the curtain to create a sense of space that would investigate mostly the connection between religion and mythology and those same and it was a curtain a black curtain of seven meters high and that same curtain i used it in athens one year after to do a solo show and i covered the curtains with white pigment this idea of pigment is also very central in the sense that uh, i keep researching about this white powder that it would be matter itself or colorful powder. I'm very obsessed with the idea of chalk. I have many, many works that relate to this. The white chalk, the yellow chalk. It was uh, also beautiful the in, the, in the curatorial project where you had these many different pigments in one exhibition. Yes, and I still want to do a show covered with pigment. I tried to do that in Vienna, but they wouldn't let me because it could damage very important white works like like uh, the the soft sculptures of uh, Sarah Lucas. <laughs> so I was forbidden to to put pigment on the curtains, but I really wanted that. So I did in two solo shows, and then when I did biennial, uh, we had like three thousand meters of velvet to create many 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 square meters of velvet mm. curtains that would replace the walls like we did in Vienna, like we can see in the picture there. So yeah, we also have a, a lot of curtains left. There is one more question. Hold them. Hold them. <laughs> we'll, we'll hold them. Okay. Um, is there another book plan to be published? Because something that is very amazing, I remember when we did the um, book presentation four years ago at my old space, um, you said you have to buy the books because they'll be sold out. And I was like, yeah, but I still have time. And literally, I think no. two years later or one and a half years later, it sold out. No, Lisa, the book was sold out in four months. No, really? 
Yeah, it's in the rare air section of MacBook. They just launched it. I also, I have a few, if someone wants to buy, please get in touch with me. I also have. And the books, they are like really expensive now in Amal. Really, really, really. And I wasn't, it was already, it, when, when I launched it in Brazil, it was already sold out. And it was not even four months after. So yes, I have. I actually already did uh, two books. They were finalists in some awards, but I, I didn't launch them. And to be honest, I want to do so many books, so many, that uh, I just need to start doing them. I have one here that I can show you that it's only related to the battle of the sun and the opposite of the sun. That is this performance. Oh, really? But uh, yeah, the, the, the book as a artwork, is a, it's something that uh, it's already in my, in my research since the beginning. And by the way, let me show this. So these are all very, very old. This is my first book on photography looks here he's written photography here and it's uh, it's the first one this was mm -hmm. recently in brazilian newspaper this picture to talk about quarantine so at one point you see bart and uh susan sontag at one point it was the theory the the not only the theory but also the um, technical theory of photography and in the other side I would just put images that I was doing Look, this was in uh, one underwater let's see, wow. see more. yes more of, so when uh, when was that I really like these portraits they're really weird they are also th this also was in Brazilian newspaper uh, two weeks ago this one no, I think this. So Brazilians maybe have seen it recently. And I have many, many, But many. this is like a sketchbook, no? No, yes. I'm just saying that my relation with uh, uh, text and, and, and books and... Ah, it's here. It's here. Look. So this is one book that is not launched, but it's ready to be launched. It's called The White Fire. Actually, it's called the battle between the sun and the opposite of the sun. I just should, I need I need to organize myself and find someone nice to publish them because it's already two projects that I have it ready. This one I did, uh, and it's nice because the the swamp that is this first book. It it's was like a, like, it was a seven years. Uh, compilation of research so it was all of the research I did in the museums this is the first book it's very heavily it's, uh, it has a lot of content and now I'm really happy to but do... maybe Sophia you want to go in and, and and go through some of the pages because it's such a great combination of your texts or your poetry yeah, and yes. yeah oh this one Starts with this image that I really like. That is called it "Sound." I can read maybe the poem, maybe "Solid White." So it's a poem that goes through the entire book. What maybe it's easier to read? I can either read this in th uh, poem, if you would like, or I can read this poem that it's in the. Uh, which one you prefer, Lisa? The poem I, within. I think maybe. this one. Okay. This one? Yeah. Okay. And it's nice because then we see a bit of the images too. So solid white, solid white, solid sound. Absent light as existence. And all things being unequivocally thick. Image is a substance of meaning. Forcibly, inevitably, absolutely, and without exception. Objects are a distinguishable nothing. 
indifference is an unconceivable from which oozes oozes is like drops you know it's like melts from so from which oozes what is called a time oh no but spaces sorry i missed uh, one part but i know what it is it was but spaces right here but spaces spaces also are thick i really like this and that is so strange <laughs> <laughs> and that is the effect of all visible things look it's the same image and from all this and from all that oh sorry and and so and from all this and from all that so beautiful yeah melts i forgot i don't know where it is the last one but anyway we can go like that uh, i will read it this part then it's easier now to understand so solid matter existence and all objects are a myriad myriad like rivers, things only occur by their own resistance. Meaning is contained in any form, but from it can never evade, except through this empty, transparent void, which is to exist. Therefore, everything exists by its own negativity, and the firm white is so firm that not even, not even light contains. I, I have a Amazing. friend <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Well, Sophia, thank you so much. Maybe we can continue the conversation in the wild, yeah, let's you do know, that. in the jungle and talk a bit let's more about, you know, your poetry and, um, yeah, a bit more about the research, but that would be really great. It was yes, so nice to see you. Hi, Delphine. So nice, a lot of people. Yeah. Let me show you around the studio just one more time. So this is a big, big thing. Writings, the original writings. And um, I love this. Some are even from the caves themselves. This is an image of the cave. And then I have this other big, big table. That I, that, this has a lot of our pictures, mm. VNN's pictures, Lisa. Yeah. And, uh, and then I have this uh, carpet where also I do a specific research and then some images. And also here, it's more a research that I'm doing with pigment and more colorful uh, subjects. And, so um, this is the, the paintings that you were talking about before, right? Yeah, about but the, the no, it is. But the, there's no no painting here that is from precisely from this Jose that it was the only artist alive. So that's okay. a quick kitchen. But uh, but yes, it's from the Museum of the Unconscious. We can do uh, some time. Uh, we can, I can maybe this space. But for sure, it, it's in, really uh, great to see your research practice as well, you know, to see how you're working. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And let's try to do this one in the forest house. It would be that would be nice. Thanks, Sophia. Thank you.